John the Baptist is a herald of the saving Lord, whose way is prepared by repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As we hear the careful record of human leaders, we sense the spectrum of political and religious authority that will be challenged by this coming Lord. A reading from Luke, chapter 3. In the fifteenth year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip ruler of the region of Bituria and Trachonitis, and Lysanias was ruler of Abilene, during the high priest of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region of Mount Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. This is the word of the Lord. Please be seated. We Americans love beauty. Our TV commercials have nice, bright colors, because then we'll pay more attention. We spend a lot of time on money and money on beauty in America, to find not only a good car, but a nice-looking one as well, to find or build not only a functional home, but a beautiful one. We fill our home with things that are both functional and beautiful. If we Americans don't buy beautiful things, we make the beautiful things we have. We wax and detail our cars, we paint our houses, we straighten our fences, level our lawns, and trim our bushes and hedges. We add flowers inside and out. We even make ourselves beautiful. We buy beautiful clothes and shiny leather jackets. Each year, Americans spend over $40 $40 billion on weight loss, $50 billion on, comedic, on cosmetics, billions more shaping our bodies with free weights and gym memberships. And we spend huge amounts on plastic surgery as well. Now the world would be a lot simpler if we all had the same cars and houses and kitchen utensils and bodies. The world might also be a lot cheaper to live in but it would be not nearly as interesting and as enjoyable as the world we live in, or as beautiful. Our Bible lessons today speak of a different sort of beauty, inner beauty. Malachi speaks about the Lord refining us like silver or bleaching us clean like wool. The words of our Old Testament uh, use the words fuller, I'm old enough to remember the Fuller Brush Salesman, barely, but uh, I think it's one of the cases where you have to think about maybe changing the word because I'm sure most people under the age of 50 don't know what a Fuller is. Philippians today speaks of us becoming pure and blameless. Luke talks about straightening our paths, smoothing our rough places. This inner beauty that we all have is not as obvious as the other sort, but it is even more important and more valuable, especially in God's eyes. Ordinary beauty shows how things and people look. Are they pleasing to the eye and ear and touch? Inner beauty shows others who you truly are. It shines out in how you act, how you speak, how you think. This kind of beauty you might glimpse from a distance, but mostly Inner beauty becomes obvious only with time. In America today, we spend so much money and so much time on outer beauty, on appearances. But what would our country look like if we spent as much time and money on inner beauty? What if we focused instead on what is inside each of us? What if we had finishing schools for our souls? 
Imagine for a moment a country very different than the one we have now. Imagine an America where people try to outdo each other in politeness. Imagine an America where people are more concerned with helping others than helping themselves. Imagine an America where how you play the game is actually more important than whether you win or lose. Imagine an America where poverty is a thing of the past, where no one goes to bed hungry, where everybody who is sick can get adequate, affordable health care. If it's hard for you to imagine an America like that, then it's clear we Christians have some work to do. So how do we get inner beauty? In centuries past, young ladies and gentlemen would go to finishing schools. From these schools, they would learn how to walk and dress and eat. But the schools would also try to teach them inner beauty, how to be polite, how to make a guest feel at ease, how to get over awkward pauses and situations without embarrassing others. There was a sense back in those days that it was as important to act beautiful as it was to look beautiful. Is that the America that you know? If not, then how do we relearn these values today? How do we do it? So much of it begins with us. Most of us underestimate how big an influence we have on the people around us. Remember being on a lake shore on a gorgeous summer day? On a day like today, it's hard to imagine, but I'm betting you all have pretty good memories and pretty good imaginations. Remember that you, the fun you had as a kid tossing rocks into the water? A single stone would send ripples out in every direction. As the ripples would fade off into the distance, it was hard to tell exactly how far they went. Our actions and thoughts and words, our inner beauty, has the same effect on others. We never know how far out our inner beauty ripples. Forty-five years ago, I was in fourth grade at Roosevelt School in Owatonna. To this day, I remember my fourth grade teacher, Mrs. Toager. Ruth had an inner beauty. She seldom got angry, had kind words for everyone, and had a way of making everyone feel special. She would look my way and wink her eye as if I were her favorite pupil. Years later, I found out that nearly everyone had received that same wink. Nearly everyone felt that they were her favorite pupils, too. She was part of that America that seems to have been lost in the last few years. Look on TV and in the papers, and especially in politics, and you'll see what I mean. But we could have that civil, gentle America once again if we chose to spend a little time every day developing ourselves and helping others. But how do we do that? Well, we can go to the bookstore and on the net and get hundreds of self-help books. Self-help books that might help us cultivate the type of inner beauty I'm talking about. Doing self-help this way is not new. Benjamin Franklin, more than 200 years ago, put himself on a self-help plan. He had 12 virtues he worked on, one each week. At the end of 12 weeks, he guessed that he would be a nearly perfect human being. There was only one problem with the plan that Benjamin Franklin talked about in his almanac. It didn't work. At the end of the 12 weeks, and even along the way, he found himself slipping back into old habits. So it is with us. If we try to work on our inner beauty by ourselves, we end up falling short. That's why we need husbands and wives and teenage sons and daughters to point out our failings and show us where we need to improve. More than that, more than these people, we need a savior. We can never make ourselves perfect or be perfect even with the help 
a family. We can only repent and apologize for our sins and failings, try to do better, and ask God to help us. We can invite God into our hearts, not just once, but again and again. We can make the paths into our heart open and clear this Advent. Then when Christmas comes once more, we will truly be a changed people. What God does to our souls when he comes in is clear. What God does is to make our souls more beautiful. We are the wool washed clean by God, the master cleaner. We are the silver purified by God, the master refiner. It's not always an easy process or a comfortable one to be that wool, to be that silver, but that's who we are. It's necessary if we are to have the inner beauty that's so desperately needed in this world of ours. God has the ultimate finishing school for the soul. This Advent, open yourselves up so that God may refine the silver that is your soul. Enter God's finishing school. Open your hearts to God and you will see salvation this Christmas as you have never seen it before. If we do this, we will be a changed people. Beautiful as inside, in the inside as well as out. If we do this, our beauty and goodness will ripple out in a hundred different directions. Who can say where those ripples will go and who they will touch? The angry teen, the lonely grandmother, the broken of body, the sick of soul. Who knows? If we do this, our world will be changed world this Christmas and ever after. May it be so. Amen.